Hello viewers, welcome to my channel. I am Hashem Ali Khan. So this is the last video on theory regarding the income from other sources. Last four, three, four videos I have prepared on the complete theory regarding how to compute the income from other sources. It's a very large head. So many items will come. Without understanding these provisions, we should not go to solve the problem. So my request, my suggestion to the students, be thorough on all the provisions, then only next video will start the problem. In the last videos, I have completely explained most of the points. Now, this is the last video in which few more points I am going to explain you and that will be the end of the theoretical part. Next video will start the problems. So if you have not watched the earlier videos, I suggest you to go to the playlist of my channel. Select the subject advanced aspects of income tax. Unit number two, watch the initial videos, be thorough regarding all the provisions, then inshallah we will start the problems. Take a screenshot of the notes which I have written on the board, then I will explain all the final points on income from other sources. <coughs> Come on. Now I am going to start first point. Interest on bank deposit. Many people will deposit the money in the bank in different types of deposits. The banker will give the interest on deposits. So SSC may get the interest from bank deposit. Income Tax Act says interest received on bank deposit is taxable under income from other sources whether it is a bank deposit or any deposit made under cooperative society if a person has deposited the money in the cooperative society and from cooperative society also he is getting the interest that is also taxable under income from other sources but one exemption is given under section 80 TTA if a person gets interest on saving bank account deposit in a bank, we have different types of deposits, fixed deposit, recurring deposit, different types of deposit. One of the deposits is saving bank deposit, SB deposit. So if an SSC got the interest on saving bank deposit, then interest is exempted up to rupees 10,000. This exemption will be given under section, deduction will be given under section 80 TTA. These are the provision regarding bank deposits. Next is income from undisclosed sources. Actually, it is the responsibility of the SSC <clears throat> to disclose to the income tax department what are the different sources of incomes and what are the assets he is having. So, if a person cannot be able to satisfactorily give the sources of income to the income tax department, and later on income tax officer has found some income or some assets with the SSC which is not disclosed, which is not satisfactorily explained. Then income tax act says it is his income and 60% flat rate of tax will be applied, 25% surcharge and 4% health and education cess will be applied on incomes which are not disclosed, incomes which are not disclosed. For example, if a person, Mr. X, he is an SSC, he was caught on having some income which is not disclosed. So income tax officer will ask from where do you get this income? What is the source of your income? If it does not satisfactorily give the explanation, income tax department says it is your income. On this undisclosed income, you have to pay the tax 60%, flat rate, 25% surcharge and 4% education says. Next comes compensation on termination of employment. If a person at the time of termination or uh, termination of employment or modification of service of employment, he is getting some compensation. If he gets some compensation from any person other than the employer, other than the employer, for example, Mr. X is working in a company. 
so at the time of termination he got some compensation the compensation is not given by the employer the compensation may be given by any other person that that compensation received from any other person to the ssc it will be taxable under income from other sources huh if the compensation is given on termination or modification of service by the employer it is taxable under income from salary under profit in lieu of salary under income from salary we have the head profit in lieu of salary in that profit in lieu of salary it is taxable if the compensation is given by the employer that's it. next advance money received and forfeited sometimes in the case of transfer of capital asset when a person sells a capital asset at the time of agreement to sell some advance money will be given by the buyer to the seller for example i am selling a property worth rupees 50 lakh to mr x at the time of agreement i told him that immediately you have to pay 5 lakh rupees as advance money as a caution deposit and i am giving you 3 months time period after 3 months pay the remaining balance and transfer the property if you do not make that i mean transaction materialized after 3 months i will not refund you back rupees uh, 5 lakh rupees received as advance so if an advance money is received after 1 4 2014 if an advance money is received by the ssc after 1 4 2014 in a contract of sale and the advance money is forfeited due to non completion of the contract in that case the amount forfeited the amount forfeited is income from other source it is taxable next last and final point is bond washing transaction bond washing transaction if the owner of the security transfer the security just before the due date and again acquires the same security after the due date it's a process it's an act that a person will transfer the security actually security means the bonds and debentures if a person transfer his bonds or securities to another person just before the due date the due date is the date on which interest will be declared interest will be paid so just before the due date mr x is transferring the property to mr y and after the due date again repurchasing the property from y to x in this process mr x is avoiding the tax liability why mr x is transferring the property to mr y because in order to avoid the tax in order to avoid the tax before the due date he is transferring the property in the name of y and after the due date again repurchasing that property from y to x in this process the main intention is to avoid the tax liability this act this process of selling the security before due date purchasing the property purchasing the security after the due date this process is called bond washing transaction if there is any bond washing transaction income tax act will make liable the original transfer that means mr x in order to avoid the tax liability he has transferred the security to mr y just before the due date and after due date again he repurchased back income tax act says no you have done this mainly to avoid the tax liability so whatever is the tax now you have to pay y should not pay the tax x himself has to pay the tax so the burden of tax payment will be shifted to another person whose income is less than the original transfer the original transferer is mr x and the person who is buying the security is mr y so oh, the total income of mr y is normally lower than the total income of mr x mr x is in a high tax bracket so to reduce the tax liability he is transferring the property in the name of y now in such a case in such a case the transfer is liable to pay tax on his income income tax access if this thing happens the original transferer has to pay the tax however 
if the original transferer proves that there is no avoidance, ultimately, it, I mean, opportunity will be given of heard by the income tax department. Income tax department will ask X, why can't we put the tax on you? Then if X gives the clarity that there is no intention to avoid the tax, there is no intention, no avoidance of tax, and the it is not a planned one. This act of selling the security and buying the security is not a planned one. And in the last three preceding years, no such act had been done. If these clarifications are given by the original transferer, then Income Tax Act will not put tax on the original transfer. This is the bond washing transaction. So in this last video, I have explained you about bank interest, interest on bank deposit, income from undisclosed sources, compensation received on termination of the employment, our, I mean advance money forfeited and lastly bond washing transaction. So this is the end of the theoretical part of income from other sources, unit number two. Inshallah next video I am going to start the problems on income from other sources. Apart from that, I am declaring, again I am declaring that I have started a new channel, second channel on YouTube by name Hans Accounting Institute. So this second channel I have specifically made for IGCSE students. Those who are pursuing IGCSE by Cambridge or Adexel, Pearson Adexel. So I got many requests from many uh, students pursuing IGCSE. So I have started that channel by name. Hans Accounting Institute. Please go to the channel, watch the videos, subscribe that channel too. Definitely you can gain a lot of knowledge from these videos. Inshallah we will continue the next problem, uh, next I mean problems in the next video.